But there at last, you've set up your instrument, tuned it, wound cotton round your strings and put a thin layer of rosin on your wheel. Now you're ready to play your first melodies. First, familiarize yourself with the movement needed for working the crank. Do this without engaging any strings. You must be able to move the manivelle without sensing any resistance. Once it has reached the highest point, it should fall by itself. If it doesn't, the wheel bearing needs re-greasing. The first exercise consists of holding the manivelle in the cradle of your open hand. Apply gentle pressure in the direction of the hurdy-gurdy, so that you can feel the knob, but don't use your fingers. Now start moving the manivelle, turning it towards your body in the downwards movement and away from you in the upwards movement. Think in large circles. Imagine your forearm is the piston of a steam engine. Your wrist stays still. The circling movement comes from your shoulder and elbow. Get the feel of the resistance produced when the strings are played. Experiment with various different speeds. How does your wrist feel? It should be quite still. Be aware of your elbow and shoulder joint movements. Take your hand off the manivelle, draw a circle in the air with it alongside the instrument, exactly the same size as the rotation of the crank. Test your memory to see if you can turn the manivelle again, as described above. Some hurdy-gurdy virtuosos always start their daily practice routine in this very same way. Now it's time to get used to the resistance from the strings when they're engaged. Engage the trompette, which should remain silent, one of the melody strings and a drone. Repeat everything you've done so far. When you think you've got the feel of the movements of the manivelle, it will be time to learn to hold it. It's important for the manivelle to nestle in a relatively relaxed hand. You mustn't get hold of it like a door handle. This is how it's done. The manivelle lies, touching the flat of the hand, on the side of the ring finger. The little finger is just below. The thumb lies lightly on the knob of the manivelle. The index and middle fingers gently enfold the manivelle. The wrist forms a straight line with the hand. It doesn't bend upwards or downwards, backwards or forwards. Don't grip the knob of the manivelle. Just fold your hand round it in a relaxed way. It's supposed to be able to set something in motion inside the flexible arch of your half-open hand. Now turn the manivelle slowly and you'll feel it moving around within the palm of your hand. This is how it's meant to be, as you'll need the extra space later when using the trompette. When you assume the basic posture, your left hand will lie on the tangent keys, your little finger resting on low C. That's the third whole tone key from the left. When you're beginning to find your way around, it's a great help to mark the keys in some way. I painted a gilt bronze dot on the ends of the two C keys facing me, as well as on the G. This enables me to see at a glance when I'm playing in a group, if I'm hitting the right keys, even when my instrument is softer than those on either side of me. In addition, I've put a spot of glue on the edges of these keys, which has dried and hardened into a bump. This helps me feel my way to the right position for my hand before I start playing. It's quicker than pressing the keys and finding my way by watching the ends moving. 
You'll find it easier to add the trompette to your tunes later if you have got used to turning the wheel with a steady rhythm right from the start. Begin by playing a single note, for instance the C your little finger is lying on. Start turning the manivelle from the top, at the point where your thumb alone has to have the strength to move the knob downwards. Press the key when you reach this point in the circle you make with the manivelle. Release it again shortly before you finish the rotation. Press it again when you get back to the same point. Make a mental note of this point. Begin by turning the manivelle one whole revolution for each note. Always play the next note when you've reached the highest point, just before the wheel starts its descent. Keep the rhythm, don't change the pace. Everything should be completely relaxed. It won't be long before you can do it without thinking. Once your body has learned this procedure, once it has become second nature to you, and you no longer need to keep a watchful eye on the movement of the manivelle, as it will be turning by itself at the same speed, then you can start to play two notes to each revolution. The point on the circle at which you play the second note will be diametrically opposite the point at which you played the first one. One note. Two notes. Later on, you'll be able to play three or four notes to every revolution, but don't try until you've practiced the first exercises with one and two notes in a relaxed manner for at least three minutes at a time. Let your body take its time to learn, and don't force yourself. You should enjoy what you're doing. Relax. The little pieces I'll be playing you in a minute have been recorded so that you can learn them bit by bit. What's more, you can choose between at least two different speeds, the first being one turn of the wheel per note and the second being two notes per turn of the wheel. Whatever speed you play at, every piece will have its second part. You can listen to it separately or you can listen to both parts together. Have a look at our DVD menu, where there's a list of pieces to practice. So, when you've learned your first part, I recommend you play it together with the second part on the DVD. It will allow you to check your keeping in time and to become thoroughly proficient in your part. Moreover, it's more fun to practice with someone else, and the music will be richer. Of course, you can learn the second part too. But it would be better if you did that once you've mastered all the first parts, as with each of the new pieces, I have tried to introduce something new that you'll be able to use in the later ones. Right at the beginning, some of the second parts might be too difficult to learn. If you like a piece very much, practice it until you can play it off by heart. That will give you confidence. What's more, it's fun to play a piece you like off by heart, without having to look for your music.